Welcome back guys, I hope you're all having an awesome day. The World Team Championships is making headlines in the chess world. However, there is also a very strong tournament going on in Prague, the Prague Chess Festival. It features a strong field with players such as Duda, Wojtyszek, Gelfand, Navarra and Rapor, just to name a few. Currently Duda is leading the tournament with 3.5 out of 5, so let's take a look at one of his games. This was from round 4, Duda had white against Navarra, so let's see how the game goes. So we have the Slav defense from Navarra. Duda plays e3, so black can develop bishop f5 before playing e6, but Navarra opts for the semi-slav, where the bishop is locked in by the e6 pawn, but black isn't too worried as this bishop will most likely be developed to b7 on the long diagonal. We have knight b to d2, black can opt to play slowly with knight to d7, knight b to d7, and try and play b6, bishop b7, slowly building up to c5. But instead, Navarra plays c5 right away, creating more tension in the center. Duda decides to reduce some of that tension and play a3, preparing b4 with tempo on the bishop. And then white can fianchetto his own bishop. So black goes a5. We have queen c2, black castled. B3, white is preparing to fianchetto. We have b6, black does the same. Bishop b2, bishop b7, bishop d3, knight b to d7, all the minor pieces are developed. So here c takes d5 from Duda, asking black the question about the recapture. So black can play bishop, d bishop takes d5, this seems like the most natural recapture where the light square bishop becomes alive, but it does have the drawback of potentially allowing white a tempo gain on e4 and e5. So Navarra decides to play e takes d5, and the game takes on a new character. Black now has this isolated queen pawn. So Duda naturally tries to occupy the square in front of it, with a minor piece, bishop d4. This position has actually been played before, and previously black tried queen to e7. Black ended up winning that game, but it was probably due to the fact that he was much higher rated than his opponent. In this game, we see bishop takes d4, knight takes, knight to e5, bishop e2, knight e4. White managed to get a nice square for his knight, but black is pretty active as well. And this queen seems a bit awkward on the c file. So Duda castled, we have queen to c8 proposing a queen trade to lessen white's chances. Duda played queen to a2, allowing this knight c3, forking queen and bishop. So if he had played queen to b2, black would continue queen c3, which attacks this knight and the queen, and this forces an exchange. So queen a2, Duda decides to give up the light square bishop to avoid the queen trade. And now white's plan revolves around the isolated pawn. However, black does have some activity of his own. And here, giving up the pawn with the move d4 is not entirely crazy. Black gets some compensation with his strong bishop. There are also threats like queen c6 and queen to g4, so this is not a crazy move. But Navarra chose knight d3. We have queen b1, bishop a6, protecting the knight. Rook d1 getting out of this bishop's diagonal and also now preparing to pressure the d5 pawn. Black played rook to e8, knight f3 opening up an attack on the knight and preparing to plan a knight on d4. 
So now, Navarra played knight e5. Bishop takes e2, and rook c1, a nice intermezzo. Without this move, black is completely fine. If rook to e1, rook takes, rook takes e2, d4, this pawn is no longer a weakness, and this is going to be dead even. White can try and pin the pawn with queen b2, but black can respond with d3, attacking the rook. So rook to c1, queen b7 getting out of the attack, queen b2 defending the knight, also attacking the bishop on e2. Black now has to make a decision. Does he stay on this f1, a6 diagonal, or does he retreat the bishop on this diagonal? So if bishop to a6, white can go knight f3 and just prepare knight d4 <clears throat> and claim that he has a slight advantage. So Navarra tried bishop to h5. If knight f3, that can just be taken. So instead, we have knight to d3 now eyeing the f4 square. Navarra played f6, so preparing a room, uh, room for the bishop on f7. Knight f4, bishop f7, h3, just creating a flight square for the king. And now d4, essentially trading off this weakness for the pawn on b3. And the game again takes on a different character. We can observe that white has a kingside majority, while black has a majority on the queen side. This means that black should try and create a pass pawn on the queen side. However, this next move by Duda puts that plan on halt. A4, effectively locking down the queen side pawns. In addition to that, black could have some issues with this backward b6 pawn. This is not an easy position for Navarra. Instead of playing passively, for example, rook a to b8 trying to defend b6, Navarra decides to complicate things. He plays b5. Maybe not a practical decision since Navarra was way down on the clock. So if queen takes b5, white gets very active. Rook c5, queen b6, knight d5, queen a7. If white wants to, he can choose to simplify the position down to a minor piece ending. With knight c7, forking both rooks, rook e to c8, so now if knight takes, then black can play rook takes c5. So here rook takes a, rook a takes a5, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen c3, and this is key. Hitting the rook and the bishop. If rook a3, queen b2, instead of queen b4, just to stop rook a1 check, and after rook takes, queen takes a3, white will have good winning chances. So rook b5 is the best move, but here white is up a pawn, probably a draw with perfect play, but no risk at all for white. Let's go back to the game. So Navarra decides to play a4, and this is quite double-edged. You can see that both sides have their past pawns. However, white is up a pawn in this position. And he has a very nice queen on a central square. Duda decides to hang on to that pawn. Rook to c5. We have rook e to c8 and knight to e2. Now heading towards the action on the queen side. Navarra now very low on time, blunders. He played queen to e7. So a3 would have kept the game going, but instead queen to e7 from Navarra, and now the tactics work in Duda's favor. He played rook takes a4, and you can see that the rook on c8 is kind of overloaded. If bishop takes, now this diagonal is no longer controlled by black, so queen c4 check, followed by picking up the rook. If rook takes, then rook takes c8, king f7, Queen c3 looks at the bishop, 
and also this uh, threat of rook c7 and this is very tough to defend. If queen takes c5, rook takes a8, threatening to take the queen as this rook is now pinned. If queen c2, rook takes, and simply b6, white is up two pawns with a very dangerous passer. And this is completely winning. Navarra tried rook takes c5. We have rook takes a8, king to f7, and b6. Pass pawns must be pushed. White also threatens rook a7. Navarra played rook d5. Rook to a7 anyway from Duda. We have rook takes d4. Knight takes d4 and bishop to d5. Trying to prevent this pawn advance. But here Duda simply captured the queen and played knight f5 check. And in this position, David Navarra resigned. If king d7 trying to approach the pawn, white can simply take the pawn on g7. And if king f7 instead, then b7, that has to be taken, otherwise white simply queens. And here, knight d6 check wins. So an impressive victory from Duda. He kept the pressure on Navarra throughout the game. And a4 was a nice move, which caused Navarra to take a risk instead of trying to defend passively. But unfortunately, that didn't turn out so well for Navarra. And Duda played a nice combination to finish off the game. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching and have a great day.